Shalom, Yasha'Allah, is brother Mapathak. That'll be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And um, this is going to be a video dealing with the topic of why you should avoid pork. You know, to, to, to avoid pork, stop eating pork. You know, and um, in this video, we're going to go into some scientific um, facts behind why the Lord actually said pork is abominable. You know, it's an abomination to eat pork according to the scriptures. Um, so, yeah, we're going back to the basics, um, the sincere milk. And um, before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. And that's all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world will ignorantly call Jesus Christ, and also in the, Holy, in the um, name of the Holy Spirit. And um, I want to give double honors to the elders of Great Millstone, starting with Elder Apostle Taharon Down, who taught us this truth through the Holy Spirit. And um, we're gonna dive right into this thing, and this is a really good, um, a really good article. And this is actually from an actual doctor, you know. And it's titled, and this is from DrAx.com, and it's titled, "Why Should You Avoid Pork?" Right? And it's from Doctor Doctor Josh Ax. Um, and um, I'm gonna start from yeah, I'm gonna start from the top actually, right? So the, really, the number one reason, right? Just to make this um, plain upon tables. Um, for edification's sake, the number one reason you really avoid pork is because the Heavenly Father told you to. It doesn't matter what, if science was to tell you that pork gave you a good amount of protein or pork can heal this or do whatever, it does. It wouldn't matter because the Lord said it's unclean, you know, so the, the word of the Lord comes before anything, you know. So this is Leviticus 11 and verse 7, and it reads, and the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed. Right, meaning he has these different characteristics of of the um, clean animals. Right, it says yet he cheweth not the cud, meaning he doesn't properly digest his food. And for edification's sake, I actually want to go into what does it mean to chew the cud. You know, um, chew the cud, right? Because I know a lot of people read this and don't really understand uh, what that's going into. So, um. Just to make it clear, it says when animals such as cows or sheep chew the cud, they slowly chew their partly digested food over and over again in their mouth before swallowing it. You see? So that's what it means to um to chew the cud. So they um and it helps digest the, the, the things like um parasites and things of that matter. Um so going back to the scriptures. Uh, verse eight, it says, so lucky I'm gonna read on in verse seven. It says, yeah, he chewed not the cud. He is unclean to you. So the pig, the pork swine is unclean to the Israelite men, to the Israelite woman. You know, these laws were only given to us Israelites. So the Lord doesn't care if these other nations eat these abominable foods, but us, we're not supposed to eat these things, right? It says of their flesh shall you not eat and their carcass shall you not touch. So not only could you not eat a pig, you can't even touch a dead pig. That's how filthy and abominable that animal is. You know? It says they are unclean to you. You see? And before we had garbage men, men would walk around with swine, man. You know, they would walk around with pigs to clean up the the the, the refuse of the earth, the refuse waste, right? Meaning just basically meaning things like garbage, you know? Um, dead animals, right? Dead plants, feces. The pigs will eat all these things up. It's super filthy. So I'm um, going back to the article. Um, it says pork is the most widely eaten meat in the world, making up about 38 percent of meat production worldwide. It's especially popular in East in East and Southeast Asia, Europe, Sub-Saharan Africa, North America, South America and Oceania. It says, if you're at all familiar with the Bible, so this doctor actually uh, references, uh, references the Bible, right? It says, you probably remember that in it, God specifically instructed his people. And uh, it says his people. So he understands that the law was given to the Israelites. And um, so it says his people not to eat pork and shellfish. Many people are surprised to find this out. But in the Old Testament, God warned us that the pig was an unclean animal. You see? And we just read that. It says, why? Because the pig is a scavenger, not meant for human consumption. 
check out Leviticus 11. We already read it, but I want to go into that word scavenger and the etymology. You know, the pig is a scavenger. I believe I searched that recently. Well, I haven't. Um, oh, yeah, I have. Here it is. Right. It says originally a person hired to remove refuse from the streets. And I just told you all what refuse uh, is. It's going into like waste, just garbage. That's that's basically what that's going into. But I'm going to actually get another definition. Um, I believe it's a better one if I just Google it. Um, a scavenger. Right, check this out. It says an animal that feeds on carrion, right? Dead plant material or refuse. And we know what refuse is. Let's see what carrion is, right? The decaying flesh of dead animals. So it's the animal that, re that that eats the decaying flesh of dead animals. That's what pigs do. So it says an uh, animal that feeds on carrion, right, which is dead um, animals, dead plant material or refuse, which is garbage. You see? So um, this is what a, this is what a pig is, right? You throw anything in front of a pig and the pig will devour it, you know? So, uh. Read it on. It says, no matter how you think about it, pigs are rather dirty animals. They're considered the garbage and waste eliminators of the eliminators of the farm. You see, so even on a farm, how I told you back in the day, they were basically used to, to clean up garbage. They're still doing that on a on a farm. You know, when you got waste and dead things on a farm, you can use your pigs to clean all these things up. It says they're considered the garbage and waste eliminators of the farm, often eating literally anything they can find. This including not only bugs, insects, and what's and whatever leftover scraps they find laying around, but also their own feces. So these damn filthy, abominable animals, they eat their own shit, man. You know? And it says, as well as the dead carcasses of sick animals, as we just read, um, which is a, um, a characteristic of a scavenger. You know? It says, including their own young. At least one farmer has gone out to feed his pigs and never returned. On that morning in 2012, he literally became the pig's breakfast. So you had an account of a man being eaten by his own pig, a farmer being eaten by his own pigs. It says just knowing what a pig's diet is like can explain why the meat of the pig can be dirty or at least very at the very least not so appetizing to consume. And while being grossed out may or may not be valid reason to eat something, it's vital to understand a bit more about pork. Before reaching your own conclusion, let's talk about this popular yet seriously questionable protein source, right? So I'm going to read a couple of these points. I'm not going to read the whole article. If you want to check it out, it's on DrAxe.com, right? So it says um, the problems with pork. And number one, it says the pig's problematic digestive system. It says um, there are reasons that the meat of the pig becomes more saturated with tox toxins than many of its counterpart farm animals. So like it says, the first reason has to do with the digestive system of a pig. A pig digests whatever it eats rather quickly and up to about four hours. On the other hand, a cow takes a good 24 hours to digest what it's eaten. You see, so a pig doesn't properly digest their foods. You know, and this is how this is why they're, they're filled with parasites and toxins and things of that matter. And um, reading on, it says during the digestive process, animals, including humans, Get rid of excess toxins as well as other components of the food eaten that could be dangerous to the health. Since the pig's digestive system operates rather basically, many of these toxins remain in its system to be stored in its more than adequate fatty tissues ready for our consumption. You see, so they're just storing up a bunch of toxins, you know, so eating a pig is, is very toxic. And that's why it, it brings forth many sicknesses and diseases. And we're actually going to read about that as we read on in this article. It says another issue with the pig is that it has very few functional sweat glands and can barely sweat at all. Sweat glands are a tool the body uses to get rid of toxins. This leaves more toxins in the pig's body. You see, so they don't even sweat, you know, so they don't really have ways to release the toxins that's in their body. One, they don't digest their food properly to get rid of the toxins. Two, they don't even sweat properly to get rid of the toxins. You see, so they're just filled with toxins, man, <clears throat> you know, and it says um, this leaves more toxins in the pig's body. When you consume pork meat, you too get all these toxins that weren't eliminated from the pig. 
None of us need more toxins in our systems. And that's 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 a plain fact. It says, in fact, we should do all that we can to eliminate and cut down on toxin exposure. One vital way to do this is by choosing what you eat carefully. And for me, that definitely includes completely avoiding pork products of any kind. Right. And same for us Israelites. We need to be avoiding pork products of any kind, you know. And um, two, it says increased cancer risk from bacon and other processed pork. Right. So that it, it also increases your, your chances to obtain um, and contract um, cancer. You know, so it says, according to the Royal Health Organ Organization, processed meat like ham, bacon and sausage causes cancer. And our people loves ham, bacon and sausages, man. But these foods, they cause cancer. It says the International Agency for Research on Cancer actually classifies processed meat as a, carc a carcinogen, right? Which is something that causes cancer. That's literally what a carcinogen is. It's something that causes cancer. You see? So it says these processed meats are, 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 are called carcinogens, right? But it gets deeper. Check this out. It says researchers found that consuming 50 grams of processed meat each day raises your risk of collateral cancer by a very significant 18%. And that's, that's a lot. It says processed meat is considered to be food items like ham, bacon, sausage, hot dogs, and some deli meats. It says, noticing a theme here, these are mainly pork-derived food products. You see? They are mainly pork-derived food products. So it's this pork that's that's causing um, a lot of cancer. It's definitely in, in, in our people, you know? Right? Because our people love pork. Our people love that pork bacon. They love the pork sausages. They love the damn filthy pork chops. You know, it was a time um, before I even came in the truth. I stopped eating all pork except except bacon. I would probably put bacon on a burger or something like that. But I always found things like pork chops super disgusting, you know? And um these things bring forth sickness. They bring forth disease. And I actually um I actually haven't been as sick as I used to get in the world since I stopped eating pork. You know, so this this is this is truth. This is fact. Right? It says um, these are mainly pork derived food products. How much processed meat is 50 grams? That's about four strips of bacon. So four strips of bacon can increase your chance of getting cancer by 18%. You see four strips of pork bacon can increase your chances of getting um, cancer by uh, 18% just for eating four pieces of bacon, you know, specifically pork bacon, right? It says, Maybe you're thinking that you only eat two pieces of bacon regularly. According to this research, that will likely equate to a 9% increase of cancer likelihood. See, so even if you say, well, I only eat two pieces. Hey, well, that's a 9% 9, that's a nine increase in you getting um, cancer. You eat one strip of pork bacon. Now you got a 4.5% um, chance of you getting cancer. You know? So it says, unfortunately, pork and processed meat is often consumed by folks allowing the keto diet following Salakia, following the keto diet, paleo diet, as well as the Atkin diet. For example, instead, they should be using healthier meat like beef, lamb, bison or chicken. And these are all clean meats, according to the scriptures, you know, so they're they're definitely um, more healthy than um than, than pork. Right. Because pork is literally not healthy at all. Right. Even though Esau might try to Tell you, hey, it gives you pork, it gives you protein, and it does this, and it, it does this. Hey, it's a filthy, filthy, filthy um, animal, man. You know, you shouldn't be um, putting that into your body at all, unless you're unless you're looking for a quick death. That's that should be the only reason you're eating pork. If you're looking for a quick death, man. If you're looking to die faster, you know. So it says swine flu in humans. I'm not going to really read this whole one, but I'll read a little bit of it. It says the swine flu is another virus. That has made the leap from pig to human. Influenza or flu viruses can be directly transmitted from pigs to humans, from humans to pigs, and from humans to humans. Human infection when flu viruses from pigs are most likely when humans are physically close to infected pigs. Um, it says swine influenza virus infections in humans are now called variant virus infections in humans. I wonder why the authorities removed the word swine. Was it scaring people away from eating pork? Probably. 
right? And um, hey, I haven't I haven't gotten the flu since I stopped eating pork. So this this is a fact. I literally have have not gotten the flu since I've stopped eating pork. You know. Um, but I don't want to read this whole thing. Like I said, you can go to this article yourself. Um, but it's it's certain ones I want to touch on. I want to read this one, right? It says, um, trichinosis dangers. And it says, did you know that pigs carry a variety of parasites in their bodies and meats? It says some of these parasites are difficult to kill even when cooking. This is the reason there are so many warnings out there about eating undercooked pork. One of the biggest concerns with eating pork meat is trichinosis or tri trichinellosis. This is an infection that humans get from eating undercooked or uncooked pork that contains the larvae of the trichinella worm. In some countries and cultures, they actually consume pork raw, which is disgusting, right? It says this worm parasite is very, very commonly found in pork, right? When the worm, most often living in cysts in the stomach, opens through the stomach acid, its larvae are released into the body of the pig. These new worms make their homes in the muscles of the pig. Next stop, the unknowing human body that consumes this infected meat flesh. So when you eat this pork, that's disgusting, man. You know, these these this this these um parasites they begin to live in you. You know, and this is what a, this these are parasites. These things when you eat pork with parasites, these things start to 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 um. Reproduce inside of your your body, man. You know, right when you go to the um the worm parasite they were talking about. You see, these things can start to reproduce inside of your body, all because you want to go against what the heavenly Father said and eat abominable foods. You see, types of um helminths with our which are um paras um parasitic worms. You got round worms, you got tapeworms, flukes, you got thorny head worms. These are all different parasites that can live in your body. All because you want to be wicked and eat an abominable food. You know? So stay away from pork. Um, so it says, um, the worm parasite is very commonly found in pork. Oh, um, so lucky I read that already. Um, it says similar similar similarly. Asalakis. Um, similarly to um, what these worms do to the pig, they can also do to humans. If you eat undercooked or raw pork that contains the parasite, then you are also swallowing trichinella larvae encased in a cyst. Your digestive juices dissolve the cyst, but that only unleashes the parasite into your insides. The larvae then penetrate your small intestine where they mature into adult worms and mate. If you're at this stage of trichinosis, you may experience abominable uh, salakia. Uh, abdominal, abdominal, ad, ad, <laughs> abdominal pain, right? Diarrhea, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. Um, it says, unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Approximately a week after eating the infected pork, the adult female worms now inside your body produce larvae that enter your bloodstream and eventually burrow into muscle, and salaki, into muscle or other tissue. Once this tissue invasion occurs, symptoms of trichinosis include headache, high fever, general weakness, muscle pain and tenderness, pink eye, sensitivity to light, swelling of the eyelids or face. You see? And um, I'm going to go down to the next one. I don't want to continue to read on that. That's the main point I wanted from that. Um, I'll read this one. On um, five, it says pigs harbor common viruses and parasites. It says... Pigs carry many viruses and parasites with them, um, whether by coming in direct contact with them through farms or by eating their meat. We put ourselves at a higher risk of getting one of these painful, often um, debilitating diseases, not to mention put our bodies on toxic overload. Pigs are primary carriers of Taenia solium tapeworm, hepatitis E, um, um, porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome, AKA blue ear pig disease, Nipah virus, um, Menango virus, viruses in the family, Paramox virus, um, Veridae. You know, so you get many diseases and sicknesses from eating pigs. It says each of these parasites and viruses can lead to serious health problems that can last for years to come.
You see? And um I'm not gonna read anything else on this um on this article, but once again, if you want to read it, you can go to this website, drx.com. But you can see it's many uh it's it's a lot of science that backs up why pig is an abominable and unclean food. You know? And I'm gonna get one more scripture in the apocrypha and close out. I want to go to 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter. In verse 18, it says, Eliezer, one of the principal scribes, an aged man and of a well-favored continence, was constrained to open his mouth. So you had these, these um, men trying to force Eliezer to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. And they tried to force him to eat pork. Now, check this out. Now, um, this is one of our forefathers, right? It says, but he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. So he chose rather to be put to death than to eat pork, you know? So this is how serious we took this um, in the ancient days. Our forefathers would rather, rather die than to consume pork, you know, because this food is very filthy and abominable, man. And um, Lord willing, this was edifying. Just wanted to take it back to the sincere milk. And um, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakadash, Shalom.